Hey there techies, welcome to the first episode of GL Digibytes, where we deep dive into the latest technology and trends. I'm your host Devaj, and along with me, I have Global Logics technology extraordinaire, Sanjeev Azad. Sanjeev heads the APAC region as far as the technology office is concerned, and he has led a lot of innovation for our clients as well as for Global Logic. Welcome to GL Digibyte, Sanjeev. My pleasure. So, Sanjeev, as you know, there is a lot of buzz around Chat GPT. Every other organization, every other company is looking forward to implement it. But unfortunately, not many of them are aware of its funny side. So, what exactly is the funny side of Chat GPT, if there is at all? Good, good question. And absolutely, actually, Chat GPT never fails us because of its witty and the unexpected behavior. There are several examples actually, and which we have faced so far. One example would be, let's say, if I ask the Chat GPT, can April, uh, can uh, February, March, and the answer would be no. But it's April, May, for example, right? Very, very uh, different kind of uh, you know permutation combination you can you can expect from the Chat GPT, and that that's a behavior make it fun altogether. And there are several examples. One example would be, let's say, if you ask Chat GPT, why uh, tomato goes red? And, and the answer would be, you know, or oh, because I saw that salad dressed. Very, very funny stuff. And so there are so many examples and I would, I would recommend, you know, just go to the Chat GPT and ask funny questions and you will really get a lot of great answers and which, are, which may surprise you. Interesting. So has this sense of humor evolved o- over time? If yes, what has contributed to it? Yeah, it's a great question. Actually, uh, yes, uh, because uh, the the chat GPT is built by a lot of extensive data sets. Mm -hmm. And the data sets, not just the funny part or the educational or tutorial, it is a mix of multiple uh, information uh, data sets we have. Mm -hmm. And that is why, because when the chat GPT try to answer that, it try to mix and match and give you the funny answer. And you may expect that if someone, if let's say, take an example, if you're asking about such architecture in a software development, mm-hmm. but chat GPT may understand, you know, architecture of the buildings and all that stuff. Though these are absolutely different, uh, you know, domains, mm-hmm. but you will get something new, some innovative ideas together. Yeah. Great. So Sanjeev, can you give me an instance where chat GPT has been used to diffuse a tense situation? Yes, of course. As I said, that chat GPT is built by or fused by a lot of uh, data sets from different permutation combination, and the nature by nature actually try to predict what should be the next next uh, uh, you know statement for that, mm-hmm. and that is the reason that every time we get a very unique you know answer from that one. Take an example: if you ask why a computer goes to doctor, and you say, oh, because I had the virus and I need a bite, for example, right? Again, I like I said earlier as well, right? Because there are so many unexpected results you can expect. And that can be converted into humorous. And now we need to think how we can bring that, that humorous stuff mm-hmm. and make people's life enlighten. So Sanjeev, what exactly is the role of humor if we talk about AI? And how important is it for AI to understand humor and come out with jokes? Yeah, good question. Again, because tension is everywhere. Everyone is pressurized, everybody is just focusing on the business and there is, I think we are missing that human part, right? And bring that human part or the humor part into our day-to-day life will make us happy. And that's the reason, I tell you an example, uh, one of the innovations we are doing is that how we can make our developers life easy by bringing that humor mm-hmm. while fixing a bug and if I, if it is getting frustrated situation because he's not able to or she's not able to fix the bug Mm -hmm. and at that same time a pop-up will come up say you know okay because you are struggling with that problem can I tell you a joke so that will actually uh, diffuse that try to diffuse we are not saying that we will completely eliminate it Mm -hmm. but these are the kind of techniques and these are kind of ideas will make our developers life easy and they will be happy to work even in pressurized time wow that's cool so apparently now we can give more stress to our developers without Mm -hmm. tension right so chat GPT or the AI will be there to reduce the attention. Yeah, AI plus human, human touch is also needed. So the next question is that how does chat GPT understand humor and come up with new jokes? Yeah. And are there any challenges to make it learn what humor is? Yeah. So you ask a very good question actually. So let me answer in two parts. 
first of all you mentioned how the humor is generated by the chat gpt mm -hmm. because chat gpt is feeded by a lot of data as i mentioned earlier right mm -hmm. it's a massive data that is feeded into the to create that model of the chat gpt that's why the chat gpt is able to answer you mm -hmm. uh, in any form in any domain and any any topic for example right, right. so that's a humor part because it's try to mix and match and giving the unexpected results out of it in more of a joke or humor form right mm -hmm. but at the same time the information we are feeding into chat gpt is that depending on the context it may be cultural it may be linguistic it may be some political and other stuff if we have the information with the biased you know angle for example right mm -hmm. and that is where it may lead to a lot of complications mm -hmm. and you may get a very different results which may be unrest the the restness that we have in the society right so i guess it is going to evolve a lot and yes. there is a lot of scope for its yes. evolution left right level of governance and filtering is required for us mm -hmm. and that is the reason that whenever we talk about the generative ai or chat gpt or the knowledge we need to make sure that the knowledge is perfect mm -hmm. that knowledge does not have any bias that knowledge does not have any kind of irregularities or maybe we should apply some filters on top of it so that we can you know refrain from those kind of complications or information that we have interesting so you talked about biases and filtering those right so how does chat gpt handles you know these nuances that are related to culture if you can throw some light on that yeah sure because now this uh, this chat gpt area or i would say generative area is getting a lot of attention and bias and these kind of anomalies into the society is also very very important for us to understand so the organizations or the vendors like say open ai or microsoft or google they are working on defining the ai ethics compliance or ai ethics kind of guidelines so that mm -hmm. when they respond let's say chat gpt is responding back to you mm -hmm. so there are so many filtering happen just to make sure that we are not using that response should not using any keywords which may hurt person's sentiments for example or maybe linguistic or maybe culture for example right mm -hmm. and that is where this is the area which is evolving now mm -hmm. and whatever the response you will get it is a decent one nowadays and you can try with that and you will see the filter out of it right and who does this filtration if you can there is because it's a new area and then there are consortiums uh, people coming from different different uh, you know companies organizations enterprises right. they are coming together and then making sure that what are the standards are defined because nowadays so far we don't have any common standards mm -hmm. and this is where the common uh, there is a need for us to define a common consortium of people right. to define these standards and everyone should start adopting mm -hmm. and over a period of time it will evolve because it's a new area and everybody is experiment with experimenting with that right coming back to the funny side so since we are talking about the funny side of chat gpt is there a possibility that maybe stand up comedians can benefit from it of course of course but again mm -hmm. you see any stand up comedian right mm -hmm. they use some different languages i don't want to say the vulgar but they use it and that makes rumor mm -hmm. but that's a difference between the human driven humor and the ai driven humor right? right so wherever we have a human driven humor you will see that kind of vulgarity and all the stuff mm -hmm. ott is full of that right. netflix and all that right you you may have seen that right but when it comes to ai anybody can actually question that and that's what because that is for everyone mm -hmm. now it's up to us the model we are building do mm -hmm. we really need need to remove those filters and mm -hmm. it's a very contextual but yes if a stand up comedian would like to leverage the chat gpt to bring or to build a script out together and then put the human flavor on top of it yes it's a good combination to look at so do you think maybe in future you can get maybe an 18 plus version of chat gpt <laughs> very good <laughs> it's a good question by the way mm -hmm. even today also you can define if you ask a question mm -hmm. act like a 80 year old guy or a you know 50 year old guy or a five year kid for example it right. will respond accordingly mm -hmm. but the problem is that even whatever we feel is not good for the society mm -hmm. those kind of filtration let's say bias for example let's say white or you know black and all the stuff right yeah. these are uh, the stuff has to be removed should not be part of the response mm -hmm. and that is where most of the ai vendors would like to refrain from that enabling even those filters as well now you can take a model you can build your own model mm -hmm. you can build your own knowledge with all this kind of but 
do you think that that mm -hmm. really help us in the society answer would be no so it's a very very contextual and case to case basis okay so apparently if somebody is taking the api of chat gpt yes. and if they want to come up with a content generator specially designed for say stand up comedians yeah. so there is a possibility that absolutely that can absolutely 100% and that's what now you might have uh, you you may have, because content generation is one of the big area for us right, right. even the same um, same content mm -hmm. you can generate in multiple forms together right mm -hmm. in fact we have implemented one use case for our customer mm -hmm. uh, we are rephrasing that content on a regular basis so that they can have the highest hits on their websites okay. and that's a that's a big use case business use case right that mm -hmm. we have implemented interesting so sanjeev we discussed about maybe a special version of chat gpt dedicated to people who are 18 plus mm -hmm. what about those who are not 18 plus what about kids well there is no special version of chat gpt chat gpt is chat gpt it doesn't matter which language we are which age we are factoring but the funny part is that you know the way chat gpt is actually introduced is that every uh, age factor or every age category they are they are using it mm -hmm. take an example it's not about the work only but even my my kid who is in sixth grade right, right now, mm -hmm. and uh, he got a uh, essay on that uh, anxious time, for example, right? Write an essay on that one, right? Mm -hmm. And then he just go to the chat GPT say, okay, can you write me an essay? And the entire essay is written for him mm -hmm. in just a few seconds. So that is how. If you see the other side, is that it is impacting my kid's ability to creative. Now he is more creative on writing the prompt or what to ask for the chat GPT instead of learning or you know reading the essay for example and that's what the difference is right and that is why we need to have the right balance between the two don't you think uh, i mean if the kids are doing this they'll evolve into prompt engineers by themselves uh yes yes and no so it depends because that is where we as a parent we need to make sure that we have the full control or, or tracking on that one right mm -hmm. and we need to educate them how we can make the best use of it mm -hmm. because you heard about that you know a fool with a tool is still a fool and we don't want to make our, our kids fool right. so how to make this technology more effective mm -hmm. and that is where our as a parent our you know uh, subject or objective should be right so we should not lose the path of creativity but still try to use chat gpt at its full potential yes so i guess with that we'll come to the end of this session and just the last question that i wanted to ask you mm -hmm. what sort of future do you see for generative ai yeah so uh, in simple terms the future is bright mm -hmm. but again at the same time we have to be cautious about that mm -hmm. whatever the information is fed into the chat gpt should be accurate should not have any bias for example mm -hmm. should be fair and that is why the ethics and compliance policies has to be evolved right. and uh, that is one of the focus also in mm -hmm. fact uh, in global logic we are also working on some defining the guidelines mm -hmm. so that we will make sure that whatever the results are mm -hmm. or the output come from this chat gpt or maybe any generative AI, for example the uh, technology mm -hmm. it should not bring any kind of controversy into the society right so the responsibility is not limited to open ai but it also rests, rests with all the individuals who are using chat gpt yes yes great with that we have come to the end of this episode it was a very informative episode in our next episode we'll discuss about the serious side of chat gpt and how it can impact the world so stay tuned